So tell me, why do you think Diego Footer from Permaculture Voices, when I reached out to him and said, is there anybody I should visit on the Great American Farm Tour? Why were you on that list? Uh, probably because we're we we're one of the first, you know, to kind of get into this edible landscaping type of business um, and actually turn it into a business. I, I would I would guess, you know, yeah. we kind of we came up with it. You know, we didn't have anybody else to copy, anybody else to mimic. We kind of coined it on our own and just you know the simple transition from a standard landscape to an edible mm. for me was a no brainer. I was already pr- playing in the dirt. I had already yeah. been in business for myself for ten years. That was in 2017 when we went and visited you, almost six years ago. And you, how long had you been in edible landscapes at that point? 2011, I think it all started for us. when you guys went right. to... Originally. Yeah. That's wow. Traditional wow. landscaping. That's when somebody... And transitioned in 2011. You might as well tell everybody how that happened, how you, how you transitioned from traditional landscaping in Florida to putting in edible landscapes. The honesty and reality of it all is it kind of started with fear-based. Mm. Economic um, collapse. You know, kind of just looking at what was going on in the world, watching... Economic collapse. What year? Fear of economic collapse. Well, it was collapse. before oh, the 2012. Economic. You know, it was pre-2012 okay. when everybody thought something was happening then. Okay. Um, and I think I got to watching a little bit of Alex Jones. <laughs> and you know, lost I some think th- I got to. He says, <laughs> "I, I watched a little too much that, Alex you Jones." He's, he's <laughs> not fully committing to that. I think. <laughs> Boy, if you don't remember, <laughs> I, I might have had a couple of sleepless nights, and um, you know, I, re- I think we quickly realized that fear is no place to be. Oh, you know, and um, yeah, he was selling fear. Um, yeah, but the one not thing solutions. he the one thing he was selling that put us on the right path was a um, okay. survival seed pack. So we ordered some survival <laughs> seeds. Why do you laugh, Mel? Why are you laughing? Just the difference in where we are now okay. and just okay. how uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed we were in the beginning and had no concept of what we were doing. Yeah. So you, you ordered this seed pack. <laughs> it was, so you're it was a more of a seed tube. You ordered this seed tube. So you, don't, aren't you supposed yeah. to like Never bury that or something? It was something. one you could put underground you Did know, you? when things got really bad. Did you? <laughs> no, no. I actually tried some of the seeds and... Most of them were junk, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and right so around. You're gonna, what does that mean? So this is like they your savior because you can't they even get into the They, they were the wrong seeds for Florida, you know. Oh. That's for annuals. Oh. oh. It was a general seed pack, you know, that probably. For the rest of the United States and not for Florida. Yeah. Got Florida's different than the rest of the United States. Or the West. It probably wouldn't have worked out for West. Timing, yeah. seasonal mm-hmm. timing in Florida's different. And if you don't have somebody to show you the ropes or if you don't know the right books to buy, Especially then in 2010. Yeah, I was going to say, like, was there even any good information out there at that point? Not really. Like, you know, oh, we, we were no remember- references. You know, we just were kind of alone in this and mm-hmm. hadn't really met the network yet, hadn't met the people. So, um, yeah, we were so we, flailing a little in the beginning. I, I don't, hard way. Yeah, I don't do anything half You know, this is as soon as I we kind of came up with the idea, I was like, all right, two feet in, you know, we're. We're jumping into this, and that's where, you know. But how the CPAC give you that idea? Well, Melissa, obviously, we, we had a transition in company names. I was originally Clean Cut Lawn and Landscape. That's all I knew. <laughs> Clean I Cut. That. That's you know, such a good yeah. name for Could you. be the bald head. You know, I, had, I only hired bald guys, and uh, they were all clean cut. <laughs> and shaven. I had a lot of bald guys working for me. I yeah. did. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's get that straight. But, um, <laughs> on record. We were, you know, we were up one of those nights when we were kind of in that state of, uh, Fear, which I realized was no place to be. It was horrible. And Mm -hmm. we started thinking about company names and decided we wanted to do something different. And Melissa Mm. came up with the green dreams, you know, and Mm. it kind of covers everything we want to do. I mean, you know, we want to – now we're inspiring people to do this, but we're Mm -hmm. also helping people do this, you know. At the time, it was more about the buzzwords, you know, because those were new to us, like sustainability and green living and that sort of thing. Honestly, when we first started, we didn't even know the word permaculture. We had started this business and didn't even know that word yet. Until so we met um, Jim. Yeah. You were starting Animal okay. Landscapes. And when did you meet Jim? What year was that? 2012. Jim okay, Kovaleski, so the nomadic gardener. Oh, right away. For those that we learned know. so much in just a very short amount of time. I mean, but it was just our obsession we, for a while. You know, during our research and coming up with this name, we found the Victory Garden Movement. I didn't know anything about it. Mm. So we actually modeled Green Dreams after the Victory Garden Movement, you know, trying to inspire people to, to grow their own food, you know, and it was kind of our, our business model in the beginning. We called ourselves a 
sustainable solutions company. And that's yeah. actually our legal name. Um, but really? you know, we've come so that's far today. Name, sustainable solutions. We've realized that sustain though is just to keep this current system. Yeah, and Keeping it's not it working as is is sus sustaining things. Mm -hmm. Where yeah, we're, we're wanting to improve upon things. So that's you know the whole regenerative agriculture part came later, and it just makes a lot more sense for what we're doing. Did, yeah. did you quit all your gigs? Eventually. So, uh, you know, we slowly started phasing them out. What in Because in the traditional landscaping, you're just like cutting people's yards. Right. And Monthly accounts, stuff. consistent okay. income coming in is the hard thing to let go of. Yeah, it is. That was the so big thing for me. Go? You know, when I looked at the waste and what I do, and it was good. I mean, it paid the mm -hmm. bills, it kept me busy, you know, and... I loved what I did, you know. I mean, I, I got on a mower. How many mower. employees did you have? I, the max I think we got up to with clean cut lawn and landscape before the economy crashed was probably about twelve. Wow. You know, we were doing two a lot crews, of two crews, running. you know, commercial maintenance. I was out with the guys every day, and it was fun. I mean, I get on a mower; it was like Mario Kart. You know, I've always loved machines and yeah. <laughs> making straight lines and cutting stuff. I mean, I always loved what I did. Yeah. Before and um, after. You know, until uh, I realized there was another option, another possibility out there. You know, here I am putting all of these plants, all of these trees in the dirt, hardly ever native, um, um, just to look at, you know, just to come um, back and prune every single week and to cut just to look pretty. Mm. Um, that's what you were having a problem with? It, when I really looked at what I was doing and realized that there was a better option out there, it was like everything just made sense. You know, somebody, somebody turned the lights on for me. You know, it, it gave me this new lens, you know, when I'm... Purpose. Yeah. A purpose to What was the moment that you figured out that you could plant a tree that was edible instead of pretty. Well, I think we were watching a lot of videos and, mm. and okay. it, you know, getting into the organic gardening videos okay. and the we veggie were garden videos. We that way and had been for a good while, a few years at least. A couple of years, yeah. We, yeah. we fell into the... Spending a fortune at Whole Foods and the health food stores every week. Um, so that was just like another push for attempting vegetables in our backyard. We tried mm -hmm. being vegetarian for a while. I yeah. mean, we were Why'd you do that? We were vegan while? for a little while. Why? We thought it was health. Uh, health. We thought it was healthier. Healthier. You know, we've learned a lot. How'd like, you figure out it wasn't? I think my body told me. You know, mm. I, I started feeling um, a loss of energy, brain function, mm. um, just memory. I mean, just all the way across the board, I wasn't feeling good, you know, and... If, you know, we were eating mushroom-based chicken, and yeah, I think you know, we had some <laughs> I mean, helpful like, friends who helped us Did understand. Did you ever go that low? Well, no, I think the one we used was corn. Q U O R N. Ooh, can <laughs> we say? Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to make them pop. Q U O R N. Yeah, so corn. it was mushroom-based protein chicken. Not what chicken. you think it is. That it's, is hilarious. We thought it was mycoprotein mushroom-based, and then we yeah. had a helpful friend who says, like, yeah, I did some research into that company, and it's laboratory-produced. It's not even fun Real fungi. Mushroom. It's yeah, like. Wow. A, they call it mycoprotein, but who knows actually what it is and just the fact that it's made in the lab and it's not yeah. really natural. Um, so yeah, then so is that when you guys were like... Then oh. it was just hard to find things yeah. to replace the protein or just, yeah. you know, fulfillment with food. So It sounds like you guys are all, so far, you're on the same page at all these turns, surely. Oh, yeah. yeah. You were exactly on the same page every time. Thankfully. That's good. Pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody, so so nobody had Dragging to say maybe maybe veganism isn't a good idea, and 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 there wasn't a little bit of resistance on somebody else's part. Mm, I don't think so. Wow. I don't think yeah, so. We both kind of transitioned well, like out quickly. I don't feel like have we had. I resistance? kick and scream sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you definitely do. Old habits die hard. When I tried to do it to fill my appetite. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. When I switched this to paleo, hey, I was okay with that, but I said I was still gonna eat sugar. <laughs> you, did, you did some kicking and screaming. <laughs> he did. Oh. He was like, he was like, we're not gonna eat any sugar anymore. And I was like, well, you and the kids can do that, but I'm still gonna eat my candy bar. <laughs> but it never lasts. Not I anymore. We're, yeah. we're eating sugar. That's true. Okay. So Sorry. yeah, I'd say after the survival seeds, you know, we slowly kind of started bumping into some perennial vegetables, and the um, the first one I found was moringa which is the most nutritious terrestrial plant in the world. I mean, I, I sold thousands of them before I sold any other plants. And then I started fondling them with blueberries. And sometime around that same time, I was just looking for fruit trees and buying bare root trees. and Wholesaling. Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. to be honest Selling with you. Selling at farmer's markets. When I knew I wanted to get in this, I never really 
I thought I, I never thought I could do it in my backyard. You know, I thought I needed a big farm. I thought I needed 10 acres. I thought I needed 20 acres. And, um, at the time I had a good friend who was also in the landscaping business, Steve, who's like, Hey, my brother has this farm. If we take care of the grass, we can use it. So we bought hundreds of bare root trees, um, put them in pots. Half of them died. They were not the right specimens for florida uh, you know just it's just a lot of learning a lot of yeah. trial and error and i think it was sometime while we had been starting those trees at the farm and i'm selling the moringas that i'm coming back home and where i lived in downtown newport ritchie around the corner from jim and here's this farmer's market on the corner where i turn every day and i pull in you know and jim was the only legit farmer there there was you know everybody else it's Crafts. like like a lot of farmer's markets just you know they're selling arts Arts and crafts, crap, you know, mm-hmm. one real farmer. And, um, you know, I was, I was looking at what Jim bought. I asked him, where's his farm? And he said, it's in my front yard. <laughs> I'm like, well, he's in your front yard. And I honestly, Two minutes away. And I laughed just like you laughed, you know. And uh, I bought some stuff from him and I went home and told Melissa the story. Hey, there's this guy that grows in his front yard. <laughs> kind of laughing about him. And, uh-huh. you know, we're like, I, I think we realized the veggies were like really good. A week or two later, I was going back by, and I stopped by the farmer's market again, and I'm like, where do you live? You know, and he's like, oh, right across the street from the police station, you know, stop by sometime. And, you know, Jim, he's very mm-hmm. open. And it was maybe a couple days later, I got on my bike, and I went for a ride. And as I'm going down Jim's street, I almost broke my neck. Like, I, I, about, re- <laughs> I about wrecked my bicycle when I saw his front yard, because it just, it was the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. Like, I was like, this needs to be on the front cover of Better Homes and Gardens. Like this, yeah, it is like, like that. veggie garden can be beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that where he lives now? Mm-hmm. He still is lives. where you saw him for the That's first That's the farm time. we Actually, seen. no. So he was farming his mom's house and he was farming his little house across the street. Okay. Um, in the last few years, he bought the house next to his mom's house. His brother bought his little house. So he has a lot more space to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I just, I would hang out with Jim until he would tell me to go. You know, he, 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 and he would tell you to go. Yeah, yeah. He, it's that. nap time. You know, I need a yeah. break. That's what he would say. Yeah, had a good exit. Yeah, so I, I would go over there and go over there and go over there until I got kicked out. And he's like, you, <laughs> he's like, you really need to check out permaculture. And I'm like, what the heck is permaculture? And, right. You know, at the same time, we had just hired this kid that was in the sustainable food movement, Eric, and he had been telling me about permaculture too. So now I'm like, all right, I've heard permaculture from two people. You know, and I was instantly on my phone Googling permaculture course. And what do you know? A couple of weeks later, there's a course in Florida with Wayne Wiseman. It was um, a two-week intensive. I got a couple of friends to go, and I went down and took this course. And you know, I wasn't in the course two days, and I was like, it just started turning all these lights mm-hmm. on for me, um, realizing all of these different aspects of the business that we could be transitioning in a, you know, a direction that aligned with permaculture. Um, and I knew right then and there, you know, that was my future. That's what we're going to do forever. And I was on my phone already Googling the next course before we got out. I found an advanced course in Miami with Eric Tonesmeyer, mm. mm. and I registered for that while I was in the first course. So it was, mm. you know, it was one course after another after another, and just taking what pieces of it that I thought we could apply. Um, you know, originally I wanted to just do food forests, but I've realized that a lot of people today, you know, mm. they they're not everybody's ready for a full on food forest. Yeah, you know, they they mm. live in HOAs, they live in communities, they live in front yards with rules. You know, we we have they're worried to, about the upkeep. We have to hide this stuff in the yeah. backyard. Um, so I tried veggie gardening, I would say for, yeah, that was the beginning. I just wanted yeah. to clarify. Like That's what we thought it was going to be in the beginning. We thought we were just going to be full on just organic farmers and just growing yeah. fruit trees, maybe selling some fruit trees and doing annual vegetable production. That was the original concept and telling Oh, you didn't Jim. think you were going to do installs. In, we didn't re- No, we didn't even realize well, that people. the landscaping oh. was going to transition into a whole different form of landscaping. But we knew we were going to do gardens for people. We started we offering we it gonna, to our current right. clients. Yeah. But up you know. until learning about permaculture and learning about food forests and designing the landscape with that. Okay. Holes, you didn't know that was thing. We didn't even know thing. that that was an option. I mean, that's mm-hmm. kind of how Green Dreams manifested. Tell me more about that night that you realized that fear was not the way. It seemed like it was a moment. Was it a moment? I just, or was it a buildup? Fear without a solution is no way to live. It gave me a feeling in the, in the pit of my gut. You know, was, I, mm. I've never been in fear my whole life. You know, not like that kind of fear, like, you know, fear of the future, fear of what could happen, um, you know, fear of where things were going. And, you know, fear without a solution to me is... You know, it's a dead end road. It's a hamster you know? wheel. You know, it's not like Alex Jones is pushing, 
you know, here's what's going on in the world, but here's what you can do. He's just scaring you with what's going yeah. on and then selling his water filters and seeds, you know, like he's not offering a solution for everything that he's, you know, telling mm -hmm. us about. He's selling fear, you know, and I, I instantly mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I never want to watch this guy again. You know, here's my solution. You know, why be scared when you can have the food security in your backyard, even if you don't need it. I mean, in a, in a state like Florida, whether it be oh. economical collapse, whether it be hurricanes, advantage. you know, I mean, the whole idea of being able to, to grow something you could eat was just like, it makes sense, you know, and I think that's what a lot okay. of my, my clients get to today is like, wow, if I'm going to grow something, if I'm going to put water on it, which is a finite resource, mm -hmm. you know, why not grow something that we can eat? You know, why have I'll all of this? closer to independence, yeah, even this in a small amount. Wasted space, you know, and it really, I, I think I got angry, you know, when I realized that the same company that made Roundup, you know, made Agent Orange and DDT and aspartame. I was just, I was, I was angry. I was mad. I wanted to do something different. You know, my dad, um, he died of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mm. You know, it could have been from the heavy chemical use. It could have been from the fertilizer use. I mean, who knows, you know, and I just knew that, A, I could never put that stuff down again. Um, Were you using that in clean cut? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Backpacks every day. Wow. Yeah, I mean, backpack fulls. You know. Told it's non-toxic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they said you it's could drink fun. the stuff when it first came out. Um, you know, I'd love to see them drink it, you know. Right. So, you first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, fear is an acute motivation, don't you agree? Like, it, is, it does have a place. When you get afraid, you can act quick and fiercely and adrenaline. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't last, does it? You, okay. can't, you can't be waking up afraid every day. Keeps and that, you alive for and a that moment. lasts. Yeah. It does keep you alive for a moment. Yeah. It does. So it does have a place. So maybe it got you to where you could then transition. Because what would be the more sustaining motivator, m emotion, would be hope. Yeah. Mm. That's what you guys finally got to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you buck this idea of, I can't live like this in this fear? Before you had the solution, or, or had you come upon the solution? Can I say, I think for us, it was probably just as much anger as it was fear. Mm. Mm. Just, um, mm -hmm. you just get mad, you know. It was when you're taken mm. advantage of and used as a consumer pawn, and you realize what's happening. You realize our kids are getting sick as a result. I think you know our son was very sick at the time, so we kind of took it personal. Mm. Um, mm. We were angry, and I think you know the one good piece that came from Alex Jones was that part about the dangers of Roundup and the fact that it's being aerially sprayed on the crops and the GMOs. You know, all those years before when we started eating organic, somehow we missed the entire chapter on genetic modification. Mm. So until like listening to Alex Jones talk about genetic modification and just finding out how sick and twisted it's become. Um, we just, we wanted to be part of the solution, I guess. Be the change you want to see in this world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and here I am playing in the dirt and just planting stuff you can look at. You know, now we're, we're planting stuff to attract beneficial predatory insects. You don't like feeling helpless. No, mm -hmm. it was, yeah, it was, it was nowhere to be. Oh, it was like that movie Food Inc. kind of leaned towards the, the negative, the fear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They did, to be fair, they did at the end offer a solution, basically yeah, vote with your dollar. Because if, if, if you started voting for organic with your dollar, mm -hmm. everybody's going to be following yeah. that and, and going after it's that. It's been nice seeing it tip that way over the last... Mm -hmm. There was another movie called Fresh Ink. Years. Did y'all hear that? No, it wasn't called Fresh Ink. It was, yeah. It was, it was just, just called, called Fresh. 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 Fresh? I think we've seen them all almost. Probably. Except Fresh was half... Of... Fresh was Fresh good. Fresh was... A well little, it was the opposite. It was a little bit of the negative and the fear and the beginning, and then mostly the answers. Okay. Mostly like positive. the people who are so doing being the answer, being the change that yeah. we want to see and like inspiring people. We saw both. Those came out basically at the same time and obviously Food Inc. had a bigger budget because mm. um, it ended up in... Movie theaters. Yeah, movie yeah. theaters. Yeah. And Fresh, I believe, was like released on DVD basically. Okay. And so we... I don't know how we ended up with it, but... We watched Fresh and we were like, yes, yes, yes. Like, this is what we want. And then we went and saw Food, Inc. in the movie theater and we were, like, depressed. Yeah. We were like, oh, I remember crying at Food, Inc. <laughs> like, just because it was so depressing. Like, the dark side of it all. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, I think it is good to know. But right. So Fresh how did, was amazing. How did you get your first Edible Landscape gig? Well, we started originally sending out flyers to the clients that I had still retained. 
Okay. And, you know, telling them we offer fruit trees and veggie gardens now. Um, and I would say... Ken Thomas. Maybe five, five or ten of them bit. Yeah. yeah. Smile. Out of how, many? how many? Out of, out of 120 probably at the time. Yeah. That's actually pretty good. That's actually really That's good. That's like a 4% conversion rate. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't too bad. They, they, a couple of them loved the idea and the fact that we were offering the service now. Mm-hmm. They're like, let's give it a try. And Leanne Brown, there was a oh, couple, of, yeah. couple of really good clients. Wait, they had you install gardens? Yeah, whether it be mm-hmm. a raised bed garden. Were you helping at this time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all remember their names. We do. Yeah. Smile. Most of these clients I worked for for years and they years. They were his landscaping clients for years. So mm. just seeing their names go out every month with the billing and are they and still? I was part of helping with the design process and picking out plants. So no, when I finally let go of clean cut and you know completely made the transition to the green dreams was probably fifteen sixteen. Fifteen. Yeah. When yep. About fifteen. We bought the farm in thirteen. It was maybe two years after yeah. that. Yeah. You About twenty fifteen. Right. You know and. Um, I hired this young guy out of Naples who I met at my permaculture design course. Who was a just encyclopedia. A, of he was plant a botanical knowledge. freak. Yeah, um, like we could drive down the road and he could speak in Latin to every native plant and tree. <laughs> like just mind blowing. And you know, I, he worked with me for about two years, and I learned a lot from him. I sponged a lot off of him. He had already had a food forest at his house down in Naples. A with, mature thirty-year-old food forest that he bought into. Wow! It, yeah. it was really yeah. I mean, thirty-five different types of mangoes on half an acre with like probably 200 fruit trees. Um, you know, I was like, you know, he was just blowing my mind, everything he told me, because I'm still, I'm still learning to this day, mm-hmm. but I learned so much from him in that short period of time. It was, you know, it was priceless to say the least, you know, it was definitely nice. And he went to school for it. They had a program, a, well, I guess permaculture program. Yeah, FGCU. Um, oh. Florida Gulf Coast University. Has a food forest. Is I think you've been there. Went? You we went to school for it. Yep. They have a food that's forest good. there, that's and it says hard. it says oh. FGCU on the big shipping container. It's one of the few yeah, you're on we top of it. You're you're talking about that food forest. Yes, yeah. that's the one that yeah, had we been went thirty to years old. That's where he did his uh, studies no no. At. That's a younger food forest that was built. Oh, wait, did we go to that guy's yard that he's talking about? We had a host down there. He was. There was some dude that's got a jammed out yard. Did you do a video? That was thirty years old. That, that, that was the teacher at FGCU South. You went to correct. We okay. went to the teacher. Yeah, I forget what his Alex. Yeah, Alex. that sounds. Yes, yeah, so he went to Alex's house. It wasn't a very old food forest, I don't think. No, it but wasn't. He it teaches a PDC program at the college. Mm-hmm. Um, so, long story short, you know, Taylor came up to live on the farm with us, and it was burning him out. Um, the landscaping, you know, doing grass for yeah. three days. He was helping me cut grass. And, you know, Thursday and Friday. You were still doing, you were transitioning. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Thursday, Friday, we would put the food forests in, um, you know, whether it be raised bed gardens, fruit trees in the ground, deliver compost. You know, in the beginning, I did a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. I was spread very thin. Anything to just pay the bills, whether it be mulch deliveries, I do compost tea applications. We were selling, we were selling all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, we sold grow towers. We were selling nutrients. Mm. you know, I originally opened a store. So when I when we figured out this is what we want to do. Oh, like a Yeah, we brick had a and retail mortar. location in the very wow. beginning. Wow. Yes. Yeah, what happened? We were selling fruit trees and nutrients, and we had classes there. People would come and take classes. I mean, we sold Berkey water filters. We sold yeah. rain barrels. You we were just trying to sell sustainable. anything. Yeah, we just anything. didn't really have well, you were just trying to make it work. Yet. Right. Anything in the sustainable yeah. realm. Exactly. You know, and. Where are you going, babe? My okay. <laughs> so I think we realized. Where was your store at? Uh, Odessa. It was in Odessa. Just right okay. Yeah. Well, it didn't have really Close great frontage. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and I. Doing Facebook advertising, but there just wasn't a lot of social media yeah, advertising yet. Yeah, it was so yeah, it wasn't it was The internet was so different. It's true. Did you lost money on the retail shop. I'm sorry. Did you lost money on the retail shop. We did, you probably broke about even. I don't know if we lost money. Um, just not a ton of sales, you know, mm. we, we had a lot of appointments come up there. I'll never forget the first load of fruit trees I ordered from, uh, Hopkins, from Hopkins nursery in, in South Florida. I didn't know a single tree coming off the truck. Mm. You know, I'm like, I'm reading the tags <laughs> yeah. as they're coming we off. We laugh and, about the things that we Looking at the leaves, first. you know, and, uh. <laughs> He's like trying to memorize. You know, it's, it's so funny, but here we come full circle again. We, yeah. you know, we, we got out of the store. We realized that we don't need a storefront to do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, here we are. Eight years, ten years later, and we're opening a store again. You know, <laughs> yes, 
I don't think yeah. she knows about this. I yeah, didn't you know about this. about this. Yeah, so it's it's been a dream of ours for the last few years. You know, we didn't realize, you know, buying into the neighborhood we bought into on Ag Land. Um, there was other businesses uh, in the neighborhood when we moved in there. There was a lawn company. You know, I thought I could have tours. I thought I could run a business. I thought it was very low key. And it was probably a month after I moved in, they took the neighbor with the lawn company to court. Um, you know, <laughs> he, he had to move his business out. For having a business? For having a business, <gasps> yes. So, you know, it, 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 originally we were doing tours, what, once a month? Mm-hmm. I remember some yeah, of the stories you We had monthly us. tours at the farm and we started getting complaints from the neighbors. You know, too many cars on a Sunday, too many people coming into the neighborhood. Um, and now neighbors it's- Neighbors showing up at the wrong house and yeah. knocking on the wrong door. So you uh, give them the best directions in the world. You tell them not to get there early and they show up an hour early to your neighbor's house, you know, waking them up in the morning. It didn't yeah, work out. they're not happy. No. So, you know, now we're at a point where it's even gotten worse with our neighborhood. Um, some of the neighbors have voted to put- a, gate in at the entrance to the community yes to make it even tougher for us to bring clients in on the under the radar which we've still been kind of doing yeah um but by appointment and it just makes it very difficult so we've realized we need this retail outlet people want to come and shop people want to look at the plants um because you're doing a good plant business i mean uh, so your retail shop will be mostly plants mostly plants but i want a miniature version of echo so I want, I want to have the demonstration area. I want to have... You got to tell people what ECHO is. They don't necessarily know. So ECHO is Educational Concerns for Hunger Organization. They're based out of Fort Myers, Florida. They're about a 30-acre demonstration site. We went there slash on the Great American Farm Tour. Yes. Check out your video. You can see the video on YouTube. Is ECHO where they killed the goat or is that somewhere else? That was heart. That was no, heart. That was heart. heart. Similar. But we went to no, Echo. Echo is kind of super location. legit. We went yeah. to Echo before we went to heart. They have different countries. Echo has a lot you more. You can funding. go to different countries at yeah. Right. yeah, Echo is. Really yeah, so cool. they're they're Simulation. famous. Like climate simulation, right? Yeah, they're they're very well known for bringing in like moringas and chaya and cassava, a lot of these perennial, super fast growing vegetables into third world countries and te- teaching people how to survive, how, how they can grow food, how they can you know sustain themselves. Um, so I just want to have a mini version of what Echo has, um, the, okay. edu- the educational aspect, the demonstration aspect, um, mm-hmm. and the retail aspect. You know, we've just been waiting for the right opportunity now for, you know, three or four years. And finally something popped up within just a few miles of my property. And, you know, it's right down the road. I, ideally, I'd love to have everything in one place. But right, right, right now, What do you mean crazy. something popped up? You actually bought it? Up. Yes. Place. So we, we purchased seven and a half acres on Highway 41. With a couple thousand foot of road frontage, you know, I mean, there's 50,000 cars a day that go by. So we have a real good opportunity for like the retail drop-ins. I mean, mm-hmm. we've only had the property since March. I put a sign up by the road that said mulch wanted, and I probably have more than you know. It's three or four. What are you going to do with all that? Thousand mulch? yards we'll of mulch. It. it will get used. Four thousand yards. Three or four hundred thousand. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I have probably one of the tallest mountains in my county. And it's mulch. What are you going to do with all that mulch? <laughs> well, you know, it's free money. Well, it's going to break down into be soil. Yeah, it's yeah. going to eventually become soil. And I don't want to tell them not to come. You know, I can't shut them down. So we're right. we're dealing with it. But, um, we, you know, so on a lot of these projects I do, we're, we're bringing in 500, <laughs> 300, 1,000 yards of mulch. Um, wow. you know, I'm buying it. I'm semi-hauling it in. So that the idea is that we'll haul from our own site to the job. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously less purchasing costs because I will already have the product on site and it'll just be a hauling fee. Um, So, you know, not only in developing that seven and a half acres, we'll probably use half of it there and the other half just to go to clients. Um, You know, it's just it's breaking down to be the best soil there is. You know, we Mm -hmm. have no soil in Florida. It's all pure sand. I mean, the site I bought, it looks like a beach. I mean, it looks like concrete. It did look like. Yeah. So have you spread that mulch all over it? It's wood chips, basically. Right now, it's just wood chips. We're trying to get our our site plan in place. So this way, as we're spreading mulch, we're also planting at the same time. We're not just kind of guessing where things are going to go. So we're in the process of laying out nursery mat areas, figuring out where the garden areas are going to be, the demonstration area. When you do installs and and designs, do do you make all the nice drawings? I scribble. Do you like the the trees with like the... So you don't do a technical drawing. So real, I, I do a scribble drawing. Scales. And we do, no. So we for, have a team. For years. Oh. For years. Other people do it. Yeah. So for years, <laughs> I, I've had designers and, they you know. decipher his scribble. Yeah. Where I could just, you know, I, I would take the survey. I would draw in where I want stuff. I'd send it to my designer and he would digitize it and it was not to scale. Um, you the, would take the survey? I always, so that's a requirement, you know. So the way when we have clients come in, we kind of have them a couple of different funnel ways. We have a consultation, 
and we have CDI, which is consultation design and install. So if they're doing the CDI, that means it's going from the design to the install. Um, and a survey is required. You know, we have to have it for our boundaries to scale the property. What is a survey? It's the just survey. boundary well, lines in some cases. Oh, you're actually getting a real legit survey well, from like a surveying company. Most of the time they've had it. Now, if there's a situation where there's a lot of trees, we make them call in a tree survey company. You know, it's okay. why we're not trying to guess where the trees are or when we're laying things out. Okay. Um, and I'd say within the last three years, we've shifted everything to scale, maybe even four years. Um, most of my designers all now use AutoCAD. Um, okay. So it's, yeah, it's very high-end For the installation process, it's a lot more accurate. Yeah, I mean, for me to be able to look at a bed and say this bed, and, you know, we've, we use curvy paths, not everything's square, you know, not everything's straight. So to figure out measurements like that, you know, it's having a program like that's amazing. You know, you can look at this mm -hmm. bed and say it's 730 square feet. It needs, you know, 14.6 yards of mulch. You know, so we can figure uh, out our materials for the site that way a lot easier. That's why I'm not guessing. I see. You know, Do you think that... A regular homesteader needs to learn how to. If they're doing it such themselves, a I don't. They have the time. They they're afforded the time to be able to lay things out as they go. I think they could okay. do it with a hand sketch, though. Yeah, I don't know if you um, know because yours is more like trying to figure out how much. Yeah, mulch you're you trying to, bring to get and exactly how mulch. to lay out the path properly so and that you and you got to get it done to. in a few You've days to a week time. Also, they don't you know, have irrigation over the main of lines to yeah. install hardscapes for paths, edging. You know, all these linear measurements, all yeah. of that stuff is very important. Where I was just kind of guessing before, and it was yeah. working. But now we've just got it fine tuned, you know, to where it's like we're better. Seth put in our sidewalk, like we had to literally tell him exactly where we wanted everything. So, you know, he knew how much concrete to order. Right. Yeah. So he knew what to what to bring in. Yeah. And but it's a little different with us because, like, we're always home. But like your clients may not be home to tell you what they want. You need to get that out. Well, you're front. working with a team too. It's not only you installing. Right. Yeah. We'd yeah. like to start catering more to that DIY audience though too. And that's going to be our with next store. our focus we're for just trying next to figure year out how. with the store and also we're creating an online course for that. Okay. A do it yourself food force course so somebody like can kind of get the entire layout process of you know how to plan for it, how to take those measurements. Um, how to eyeball, you know, how big things are going to get. So, you know, making sure that, some, you know, your garden doesn't get shaded by some massive tree you didn't realize gets, you know, so Will that large. apply outside of Florida? Uh, your course. A lot of light. Uh, maybe eventually. We're going to focus on Florida base, I think, at first, just because that's our expertise yep. right now. Florida trees. And it's such and... a niche market where a lot of yeah. Floridians yeah. are a little lost. I mean, you can find a lot of books I on would Planting fruit temper, trees and gardens for the rest of the country. Climate all day long. Yeah. Right. I, I think the basics and the layout really apply countrywide. You know, when I when I actually went to Jeff Lawton's course a couple of years ago and saw one of his designs, mm. he never puts the variety of the tree. He says fruit tree. That's right. You know, and I can easily bush. say fruit tree. What okay. fruit tree works in your climate? Bush. Yeah. Bush. Yeah. Vine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ground cover. Natives. Yes. You know, to where when, when I'm doing a design now, we're putting... You know, this mango's Glen, this mango's Carrie, this mango's Juicy Fruit, this mango's Sweetheart. You know, we're thinking about oh, what would you do here? Well, we can't what's the guild here? You can't you can't spit that out. Fruit tree, fruit tree, fruit tree. Right well, I mean <laughs> <laughs> you know I, Apple or Apple, peach. Obviously pear, I know apples, cherry, persimmons, and then your pears, bush would be ra uh, raspberries or blueberries. blueberries. Yeah. And then your lower level would Service be berry. asparagus, strawberries. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, kiwi, asparagus. kiwi, uh, hardy what's, kiwi. What's the uh, key? You have it in a pie. Why am I not thinking about this? I have it in a pie. Apple. It's poisonous if you don't cook it. Rhubarb. Rhubarb. Oh, Barb. right. Yes. That's a perennial. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you rhubarb, asparagus, strawberries. Those would be your ground cover perennials. Yeah, I no, think. Why don't we have this? No, I'm just I think the course is important I love because meat. you know we. <laughs> well, all, you love fruit too. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm at a point where I don't do any designs for regular consultations, and they want them. We turn them down weekly. You know, clients where like you would oh. consult and tell them what to do in a plan. You don't want to do that, and then they would plant it themselves. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. And I want to do that. We're just not there yet. Right now, oh. we're so spread thin. I don't have enough designers. We're only turning around designs in this limited amount of time. I don't want to back them up anymore. 
with there, the ones yeah. that aren't actually turning. So, what in kind of projects that. do you get behind right now? What kind of excitement? What, what excites you? Well, I mean, if I'm ripping out grass, I'm excited. You know, it's uh, <laughs> don't be a grass hole. Don't you know? be a grass hole. Yeah. So um, you like to do the installs? I do. I like. I, I, so, I, I'm kind of torn. I love the little jobs and I love the big jobs. Um, I, 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 you just tear, like tearing out grass. Just like tearing out grass. Regardless of yeah. how big it you is. You know, it's like tearing it out and compost. Yeah, it? sometimes but what I have found, because we've moved towards machines, you know, we machines, uh, there's no way mm-hmm. I could do what we do without appropriate technology. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, mm-hmm. tractors and bobcats and Especially dump trucks. I mean, it, it would take us 10 times longer. Yeah, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It, my, it's a model. You had to start that way, though. Well, I had, but so that's, or did you rent it in the so beginning? So that's my benefit, Justin. You know, coming from this, and you know, for people that want to get into this business, mm. start with plants, start in the nursery industry. Mm. But you know, coming from a landscape industry, I had the trucks, I had the hand tools, I had a tractor. You know, I had all of these things. You know, so it wasn't like I started everything from okay. scratch. I didn't need to buy wheelbarrows. You know, I already right. had big diesel trucks. I'm not starting here like a lot of these guys today that are. You know, trying to start out of their back of their Barn, little Tacoma, yeah. which is great. All power right. to yeah. them. We love it. I had that edge. Yeah, you know, that really you helped me out a lot. Um, you know, I, I didn't do a lot of sod replacement. Even as a standard landscaper, it was never something I was very fond of. So now I own three sod cutters. That's our easiest way to get the grass up. You do like getting rid of that grass. Um, well, grass in Florida is tough. <laughs> um, we don't really it's, have a native grass. It's not native. It, it, oh. It's hard. It's not good for our ecosystem in Florida. So as environmentalists... You have so you're a have, real grass hole if you have grass in Florida. And not animals on it? Like, and not, not behind, If it's irrigated? Anti- yeah. Yeah, I mean, grass. most of these HOAs... Now, Florida is the number you. one state for cattle. Did you know that? It, over it, over Texas. I did, but the sad part is, and I think some things have changed since Corona, they don't finish them there. Right. They get shipped off. They all they go, go to the feedlots feed for Texas. the last tail of their life. In Iowa. You know, uh, there's a huge market in, in Florida to, to finish beef there, and it has started to happen since Corona. You know, I think a lot of these guys okay. have realized, like, we can we just sell need to, local. We need to keep, keep it in-house. In-house. Yeah. yeah, instead of selling it. And they're not feeding them anything. It's all grass because we have grass all year long. Yeah, so they, I know, right? So they take this animal that's been free-raging on grass. It's literally all year round. And then finish them on corn. Don't you think <laughs> grass-fed beef is going to be the thing because fertilizer is going up, grain, grain is prices going are up. up. It's going to yeah. switch just because it's going to be it's more gonna affordable. It's going to be actually cheaper. <laughs> it's yeah, going to be sword. actually be affordable. Whereas like the grain fed stuff is not going to be affordable uh, because corn's gotten so expensive. Yeah. Let's go back to nursery. If so, and you were saying if somebody were starting out from nothing, you would recommend a nursery. Do you think somebody should just start a nursery and even like grow plant, start plant starts like veggie starts and go to the farmer's market and sell that or? Or what are we talking about? You know, I get the question all the time, and I, I usually tell people to get a job at, like, a native nursery. <laughs> get a job. You need to be the get a job guy on get TikTok. Get a job. So, no, but at, go, go work. Place I thought you can go were going, like, get a job. Get a kind job in the like office that and then no. do this yeah. on the side. Have you ever, I have you ever seen that guy? I guess. Yeah. Have you ever seen that guy on TikTok? Says, go somewhere go where you can glean information. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be get a effing job. Get a job. Get effing job at a nursery. Get a job. But you're going to learn so much, you know, you're going to learn. And I think starting with natives, most nurseries are just standard crap in Florida. So if you get into a native nursery, a lot of those plants already mix into our, you know, our ecosystems that we're trying to create. You know, there's not a lot of fruit tree nurseries. There's maybe, you know, a couple you know, where we have a lot more native nurseries where you're going to start to learn the plants. Once you find out that this is what you love, you know, that, that's what you start. You start propagating these plants. You start these plants on the side. You start your own business on the side. You know, you, maybe you're doing it on the weekends, native installs. As it's growing, you're transitioning away working for this other person to your own thing. And then, you know, at that same time, hopefully you're studying fruit trees and perennials and learning these other things and experimenting. Because I can tell you, for me, I can read all the books in the world or read about all these things, but I learn from doing I learned from failing. I learned from trying. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd rather, you know, try better, fail and try better. You know, it's for me, I that's the way I learned. It has you know, to from be actually, experiential for him. Yeah, you know, get out in there and try. Like I, I found out that star fruit trees will not grow unless they're in deep shade by planting them in the wrong place. Mm. You know, they are pretty much wind intolerant. Like I had one in my farm for two years, it never grew. I moved it within a year. It was fruiting in three times the size. Moved the tree that was already growing for two years. And you'll never forget that. 
Yeah, just like, you know, with bamboo. I mean, you know, like a lot of this stuff, I, I jump right in, like I said, and I think about it, <laughs> but I don't really realize what could potentially happen. You know, like we've we've planted some things we wish we didn't plant. Like when we first bought the farm, we wanted to do a big market garden. You know, that was my mm. last market garden. Okay. That was the year we went out with the bang, you know. <laughs> You're a full circle guy because you cursed that market garden when I was there in 2000 and. And we're back again. Seventeen. That's what I'm saying. Now you're back. Now. now you but have you're Martha not in that Stewart. location. Uh, with are you? No, he is. Same time. property. He hated you're, that. If but he's on the back forty his... with the. Oh, you're not the same part place. Of the, but that it, doesn't matter. Same property, just yeah. the back side of yeah, the property. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But I'm just saying, like that location <sighs> on the property wasn't a good spot. You found you, a better spot. You, you forsook the market garden for for a while, and you cursed it when I was there, and now now you're about it. I, I think it was I, just the comparison. You know, we were in, like, a standard backyard in the house before we had moved into this one, and our entire backyard had been completely converted into all annual vegetables, raised beds, our little grow towers and all of that. Everything was busting. It was just, like, we had no problems getting anything to grow. And then, then we move out to this new property where, you know, honestly – we let the land sit fallow for a little while before we put that market garden in. But before, you know, it was pure sand. Um, so we tried to put these annual vegetables in, and they were just completely destroyed by grasshoppers. We just had a whole new yeah. list of um, contenders to deal with, I guess. You don't have any grass on your at your house. No, I do. We've got a couple hours of grass to cut. It is non Do you? non well, non like irrigated na- oh, over native, by the high but... tunnel. Uh, so I, I have a couple acres mm-hmm. of grass, and then in the I back get, you have um, some grass. Yeah, that's, there's a time and a place for but some the grass. grass. I have, but it's not it's irrigated. Not Saint Augustine. It thrives on neglect. Most people in Florida yeah. lay Saint Augustine. Okay, and that is probably the he could this say the worst grass you could ever use in Florida because, because it requires so, heavy, heavy amounts of water. And heavy amounts of fertilization and pesticides. Fungicides, so, insecticides. There you go. All of it. I mean, it's all what kind of grasses board. are on the pastures? And that's like probably 90% of the grass that's in Florida. Typically bahia. Yards. Be- Is that oh. what the Seminoles would have seen? Bahia? So, and the buffalo? Bahia, what bahia was also imported. You know, I know there's a lot of clumping grasses that are native in Florida. We have a lot of native gamma grasses and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So that's probably, I mean, it was probably more treed too back in the day. Yeah, you know, we oh, didn't yeah. have yeah. as much. You have a lot, that that opened my eyes when I went to your place, and you have these majestic Oaks. oak Oaks. trees. You have this little microclimate there that's just you a have little an amazing place. It's a little <laughs> oasis that is a lot cooler there. That, you know, that was something that I found through permaculture and food forest. You know that these plants don't need full sun. You know, that, you know, most of these species that I'm here trying to grow, subtropical yeah. species, and, you know, just so everybody knows, you hear Florida, we get frost, we get freeze. Mm-hmm. You know, we're kind of in this weird place in Florida where I can't really grow mangoes, um, but I can grow bananas and starfruit, you know, but we can get zapped and they're going to turn brown, but they'll grow back, you know, so... Finding this perennial base system. Where you are in Florida, if you go further south in Florida, south you can. in Florida, yeah. So we're north of Tampa. What we're like we call nine B Central Florida. Right. You know, if you but get, if you go in like Fort Myers, oh yeah, they so, could but, grow all those things right. easily, typically. But they they get the they occasional frost, frost and freeze too. I mean, it happens yeah. even in Homestead. Homestead? Yeah, yes. yeah. which Homestead is south of Miami, yes. for, so people know. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, like they, they the get it there too. You know, so we've got kind of a tough growing climate between our rain, our humidity, the hurricanes, the tropical. It is. Storms, it is a tough cold, climate. Cold oh, frost, surface, sand. Yeah, it's it's the sand. I okay, didn't so how does somebody to surrender? Um, to surrender. <laughs> I'll get this question. Quite, what what does somebody do to do in sand? If somebody's wanting to homestead okay, and they want a garden, how do they deal with the sand? Well, then, Oak, mulch, hardwood, mulch, mulch. mulch. The number one thing is obviously building soil. Yes. Yeah, okay. So we we've you know found that the tree mulch and not oh. all mulch mulch is created equally. You know, when you go to a box store, you're getting the bag mulch. It's pure cypress. wood. It's per- typically cypress that came from a swamp. That's you know? not a good idea? No. Not a good idea at all. Not for a garden. It doesn't break down, right? It, <laughs> well, you know, A, it doesn't have the leaves and the twigs in it. So it's just pure oh, wood. And okay. also, you know, that bacteria, that fungi from that cypress tree is not likely going to be present, especially in my soil where it was an oak base, you know. So most of central Florida... Um, that climax species, that pioneer species, is oak. You know, it's mostly oak based. You want m- local mulch. So that's the crazy part. The free stuff. 
You know, the, yeah. the stuff. stuff that these guys are paying the dump. Trying to get rid of. You know, yeah. trying to get rid of. It's and, a waste product for them. them. dump it on your place now. It's gold for us, you know. So that was another thing that's changed with the property. They put up the gate. We stopped getting the mulch, you know. Oh. Uh, luckily, we have mulch again at this new property. Um, you know, but going back to kind of the annual transition, Justin, you know, when I started to take off with Green Dreams and we started to get busier with installs, it really just became more of a time thing. You know, that's why I kind of started – hating on the the annuals a little bit just personally because I had no time for it mm -hmm. you know when I found the food forest type system where it's really just you, if you plant it properly if you set it and you forget it you're just going into harvest you're just going into prune it doesn't need to be replanted every year that's what I really fell in love with about this perennial garden system surely you gotta add mulch every year not if you're planting it densely Mm -hmm. So a lot of the areas on my farm that we've planted, like Plants we're, create their own so we're, we're planting, you know, chop and drop species, you know, we're planting, you know, like the Mexican sunflower that we talked about when you came down, that's pound for pound equal to chip, chi, uh, chicken manure. It grows six foot a month. Like things grow fast in Florida. We get a lot of rain. If mm -hmm. you come in, you prune these systems, you're dropping it down, you're growing your mulch, mm. you know, and then that's, that's the differentiation in the clients I get today. The ones that don't want to chop and drop, the ones that want the prettier type system and I think that's the real blend I've tried to take with Green Dreams is to take this knowledge I had of pretty standard landscaping mm -hmm. and herb appeal and do it with edible plants. Right. You know, so we might get some flack here and there from the the purest permaculture people. You know, that's not permaculture. That's enough. not permaculture, but it's so much better than what they would have done. Yeah. yeah. What they would have installed. You know, and yeah. they were never gonna do a pure permaculture design anyway. It's not fair. Exactly. So it's like just makes sense yeah it does you make so much sense because not everybody's gonna be like alex and just jam out a and yard unfortunately there's like a lot a of jungle. people who don't take care of their food for us and mm -hmm. leave it messy so it kind of gives the whole thing a bad bad new wrap yeah that's the biggest thing i've seen with so do you go back and um continually like take care of people's stuff that you install then we try to um so we do offer, like maintenance, offer maintenance and programs, service so. calls you know my the difficult part for me on that is you know we were the only one that did this for a while and I'm still one of the only ones probably in the state that does this and travels statewide. Mm. You know, like my, yeah, next, my next project when I get home is on the East Coast. We just finished wow. one up in South Florida in the heart of where the hurricane was. This property was underwater for weeks before I got there, you know. Um, ideally, my, my perfect situation is the client is highly involved during the install. On, on some of the bigger mm. projects that we've done that are multi-acre, the homeowner will actually hire somebody to do the install with us, and that person becomes their caretaker. Yeah. Um, um, in a perfect world, ideally, I never want to go back and do maintenance. I want right. to go back and make a video and say how awesome this looks. You know, mm -hmm. I'd rather have a homeowner that just takes it and runs with it rather than me always right. coming back. You know, we'll do that. Sure, we offer that. But ideally, I, I want them to take it and run. You know, I want them to make it their passion, make it project. better yeah. than I even did it. That's you know? why they hired you is right. to like get. Get the, get the main frame help. In. Yeah, like because as Bulk we all know, of it, that <laughs> yeah. could slow you down or completely halt you right. because it's so overwhelming and yeah. you don't have the manpower of the machinery to be or able the to machinery. Do it. Yeah, but that is the tough part on the smaller jobs. I can't get the machinery in. You know, so oh. then we're stuck with wheelbarrows and everything else, and the machines in the front yard, and we're loading the wheelbarrows into the machine, and then up into the dump trucks. We're not pushing them up a ramp, I and mean, we try to use machines to our advantage whenever possible. Right. But sometimes a little quarter acre job can take me longer than a one acre job. Because you don't just because of access, fences being in my way, and everything else. It's all about you know how quickly can you move move the stuff on the ground. You mm -hmm. know how quick can we get the grass out? How quick can we lay our main lines for irrigation? Or if there's invasives there that you didn't really plan on and you're ripping root systems out, you know, that's... By hand, manually, right. you know, you it takes... the machine in there. Two minutes with the tractor, two hours by hand, you know, it's all, you know, so sometimes a little job can be just as much as a bigger job just because of the amount of labor that it actually takes to do it. Um, and labor is everything. I mean, running a business is, that's probably the most expensive part is, you know, having these employees and having the insurance and paying the workman's comp and the fuel and the maintenance, I mean... That's what all you know tends to add up and make it difficult How for a lot of people. How many employees do you have? We were at in the peak of summer this year. I think I counted twenty six. Wow. Um, that's counting subcontractors. Sub yeah. So I have some contractors, contractors for editing, uh, subcontractors for design, many, that kind of stuff. How many do you have that you would have to lay off if you had to? Nice. Lay off for what reason? No, they count on you for like most oh, of their keep, work. Yeah. Oh, we you know, we probably have fifteen that count on us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah, that's that's a lot of pressure. You know, it's a lot. You've it, had to lay people off before, I imagine. Um, 
No. For financial reasons. You haven't. Not yet. We've hopefully, suffered hopefully through never. it. never. We've suffered through it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, we really. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah, a little up and down roller coasters here and there, you know, and that's the worst part because when we run into slow spouts, like a hurricane and a job gets mm. canceled, yes, great, all of a sudden I have this time for my own farm, but all of a sudden when you have, you know, 10, 15 people yeah. working at your own property and you look at the end of the day like, this isn't making me any money, yeah. you know, my bottom right. line's dropping and I love getting these projects accomplished, but yes, it does add up. So we, we have to have a balance between installs, plant sales, you know, which since Corona, the plant sales have gone through the roof, you know, now we've really grown our online sales and shipping plants in the mail, you know, nationwide, which is really kind of neat. If you've never had to lay off anybody financially, then, then you've done, you, you've probably been conservative in hiring people. Is that right? Yeah. I'll probably say that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah so we're I, never taking on more than we need. We're never really investing into new, um, adventures in the business unless we know that, that it's, it's gonna right it's out. gonna plan out and i think we're i mean smart with the money with the business too when we have really good months we're not you know gonna go out and buy another machine right away we're just gonna keep it for coasting should we ever need so mm. being responsible with your finances is mm. is key y'all, to running a y'all, business. <laughs> y'all say it's like a roller coaster where are you right now are you on a high you on a low you on a middle where are the you the hurricane might have dipped us a little we're coming out of a low, yeah. People are still recovering right now, so... This last year has been very draining with purchasing the new property. Mm. <laughs> I didn't realize what I was getting myself into. You know, the land clearing in itself, the whole property... Working with the county ...was covered in invasive species, um, mm. a lot of cherry laurels, a lot of Brazilian pepper. How are you clearing it? Well, luckily machines, tractors, chainsaws. Okay. You know, I had two guys over there for about four months straight. Wow. Um, every day and bobcats and chainsaws just, you know, ripping stuff out, cutting stuff, burning stuff. And, you know, I get a lot of flack. Like, why aren't you mulching all of this? Well, you know, I can get free mulch to come in from trucks. Yeah, you brought up a good point today. I haven't shared it with Rebecca yet, but we've been piling up our brush to, to then hire a crew to come in with a mulch. Mulcher. Yeah. But that's $2,500 a day. To run the machine. So what do I, mean, we, what I could do probably do buy that? wood chips. It's cheaper to purchase. The same amount of wood chips mm-hmm. for two hundred dollars. A hundred percent. I don't know. We have to find that. Yeah, out. especially yeah, once you get your own dump truck, you can go get it probably for dirt cheap and bring it in. Um, you know, I, I get yeah, the. Cli- we used to have a free source, but it dried up. I get yes. the question from clients all the time. You know, should I buy a chipper? No. And it's the first thing I say to your no to. Well, that, <laughs> they'll ask you that. That's what I'm yeah, afraid so they of. could Argo. they could literally chip from the moment the sun comes up. To the moment the sun goes down with the typical homeowner chipper, which we're talking like a six inch, not a big 24, $200,000 piece of machinery, and have a pile that's just as big as that truck that gets dumped for free. Right. You know, I'm like, it wasn't dangerous. Exactly. So, you know, chippers call these guys, bug these guys. That's why we don't do the chip work, but we just hire them. But that's not, but I was thinking about it. They brought in a mini X this last time and they were loading it with the mini X, which made me feel better because I was like, I don't want anyone to die on my property. Here's some things I catch myself in sometimes. So, Mm. uh, I'll think, well, Polyface, they have their own chipper, they have their own commercial chipper and, 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 and they do it themselves and they've been successful, but. You got to remember, they're a market farm. Ma- a mass market farm. But they also We're have homestead. people come in. People drop so you have chips to do. there. Yeah, too. yeah, they take they, the free they chips. They get the too. free chips too. I think you have to look at like after that day, you bring these chipper guys in. How much mulch do they leave you? Yeah, the is it worth the is cost worth of what it, it would have cost yeah. you to buy it? You know, I mean, is it gonna? Is it a mountain? Yeah, we have to see if we can. Yeah. we can get a hold of of it. You know, yeah. I've I've found being just the thorn in these tree guys. You know, side, bugging them, texting them, calling yeah. them, offering them 50 bucks, whatever it may be. We'll get them here. You know, yeah. they're, mm-hmm. they're paying to dump it. You know, you're really saving the them. The problem is, is that they don't want to drive all the way out here yeah. because we are so far out that, and we're not on like a through road. Right. You got to call. So you, you, you turn come all the back. way in right. and then you have to track all the way back out, which so I love call? living we call, there. But. We call a tree service company and say, hey, we'll give you 50 bucks if you drop Start a with finding a relationship with the local company. Okay. But, but the big, best thing that I have found are, are the take... big companies that do the power lines. They got to come through okay. every few years and do these power lines. Yeah, that's yeah. how we got yeah, we, we got, them. We got yeah. loads. And then they came back a couple times. And dumped them. They knew you would take it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Well, this might be all fun in theory. We just have to figure out if we can find some chips. Yeah. 
I mean, I think if we can't find chips, then we rent the chipper because we obviously need them. But if, if not, as you were saying, the problem is the little brush that you're chipping just doesn't turn into a lot. And let yeah, you know, true. you guys are saving the big logs for lumber. Yeah, you're taking and the good I stuff for do, firewood. Yeah, Jim's you know? planting raspberry canes right in the brush. No soil. Huh. Right. Some but of the see, our stuff. deal is we like beef and lamb a lot more than yeah. raspberry canes. Oh, you gotta have variety. No. But I ordered a bunch yes. of kids. So we plant, let me tell you, we, we have no, like 90 trees. No, so we plant coming. our uh-huh. trees. Uh-huh. Yeah, we plant, you want to come? Petco? Wanna we come plant back? our silvo no. pasture. So we're foresting our she pastures and, and pasturing so our like all forests. Heir, heir so we're planting the fruit trees in the pastures. Okay. And I got I got apple trees that Justin's dad had planted over at his place. Now somebody listen Same variety. Same variety. They can go for nice. it. Right. That's he a good tip. He uses the edge of the forest and just lays the brush down right there on the edge and puts his raspberry canes yeah. right into that brush. In Maine. Yeah. In Maine. That's which neat. you could use so the edge to burn it. Here. <laughs> no. We can burn it and have the ash, which would bring our pH up, right? Yeah. We use ash on all of our planting, so it's a, just a great amendment whenever we're planting And we anything. couldn't buy ash if we wanted to, could we? I mean, we can probably find wood chips. Yeah, we can probably. I'm, I'm pretty. Now, are wood chips going to be toxic, we... see? And you guys might even have a different really. situation here under the power soil-wise here. than we do in Florida. We need that. Don't worry about the trees. Humus. They're spraying the underbrush. Yeah. Okay. You've yeah. got yeah. more really of a clay base. Wood, yeah. So you know? I don't okay. know if really mulch is a friend with clay-based no, soil. You could create no. mud. That's and right. Too much moisture in it, the soil. It, it, it becomes yeah. too much. We well, tried. Raised beds, we great. tried the back to Eden thing. Well, front, you know, in really. our front yard, Doesn't we used great. to have back mm-hmm. to Eden, and you were here that we, we year. We the ditch. That it was it's 18 inches yeah. of rain in that week, and you that's need where drainage. we did the raised beds. Yep. So we just go to the market style garden, Casey Allstwich, Jam Fortier style garden for our big gardens, and then cover crops. So, uh, uh, grass clippings for, yes. for in the raised beds. Yes. Yeah, I put grass clippings in my Whatever raised beds. Whatever you have amazing. available is what you should be using. And I think well, that's, that's what Jim says. Well. When he's up in Maine, it's grass. When he's in Florida, it's the wood chips. It's whatever you See? have at your mm-hmm. availability. Because I started teaching. Uh, I went away from teaching the wood chip mulching in the garden because a lot of people can't get them. Like if you have a big lot where you could put out a sign, yeah, but for most homesteaders, Chip drop isn't available. They're just, they're just not getting wood chips. It's also... But I've, everybody has a lawn. Everybody's a grass hole a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's needed. They can, they Pets can, need it. They yeah. can trim. You can, you can harvest grass and put it, use it as mulch. In so the let place, me ask you this in then. the places we have grass is where we get my mulch from right. my So Rebecca, we're, we're heartbroken that our yard is gone right now. I know, now I'm so the, heartbroken. Because of the remodel, because of the pulling out the dirt, and we used to, we finally got that grass established. I finally got the grass We go out there and lay in and the sun. And then they literally came the next so, month. So next time you out. come, we're going to have a heck of a yard. I'm excited. Are you going to be judging that. us? No. <laughs> I told you when Are I come. Because well, we don't. Well, because the love is unconditional. Because we're not irrigating it. It's it's like native grass. We're not irrigating it. We're just letting it grow and just taking the clippings off of it and putting it in our raised beds. Oh, yeah. Like, we we're don't not fertilize it or holes. anything. We don't water it. <laughs> Next time I come, you'll have Jonah Scythe in this whole place, right? Scythe. With Jim? It. Yeah. <laughs> No, Jonah will be running the, he'll be getting the <laughs> brush saw him with the machines. on the track He letter. loves him some machines. Those kids are does. amazing. Uh, okay, so what, Mel, uh, how has your job changed from the very beginning? Describe your job in the very beginning with Green Dreams and what it is like well, now. Well, clean cut. Clean cut. From clean cut to green dreams Oh, really, with today. clean cut, all I was ever doing was just helping with the billing. I just okay. ran the invoicing every month, and I was still doing hair at that time, too. Yep. So... Um, with Green some... Dreams, it was everything. I wanted to be involved with every single step of it. I think it gave us common ground, too. Mm-hmm. It was really good for our marriage to learn something together at the same time. So, however, I mean, it was very interesting for me to learn, too. It just, it was epiphany after epiphany. So, um, you know, my role in the beginning was all about the marketing, getting our name out there, Putting together the classes, you know, telling everybody about the classes, all those email newsletters, you know, whatever we had at our fingertips then in 2011. Even helping with a little bit of the design back then. Uh, Now, I've let go a bit. (laughs) We've got such an awesome team. And I've realized once you let go of control, 
and you let somebody else do their job, they can do it even better than you ever did. Um, really? You found that to be true? It took a long time to get there, to finally let go. Um, he doesn't let go easy either. There's still some things it's that go. I, yeah, there's still some things that I feel the owner of the business yeah. should have their hands on. And I probably would never outsource that to somebody else. Uh, I feel like the integrity of the business wouldn't be the same if I did. But um, I was editing the videos, you know, after you came out to visit us for, I think, the first 300 videos. I did all that editing. That kept me busy for a long time until we found Robbie, our new editor. It was. Yeah. Do you have to confront and coach these new people or what do you have to Robbie do? Robbie is amazing. Our current editor now who's been with us for, I think, a couple of years is like a... I feel like he's uh, an extension of myself. So, he's got the music. Um, okay, so he's got the he's got the finesse. The touch. You he's, found somebody that would edit it like you did. And you he found our train style. Him much. He found our style and matched it. Yeah. Yes. You didn't have to train him much. No. No. That's the key. It was yeah. very refreshing. Got very lucky there. We we attempted with a couple editors before mm -hmm. that. And, you know, after feedback a couple times and not wanting to okay. wanna hurt anybody's feelings, but it's just not what I needed. It just wasn't a fit. Yeah. Uh, have you ever hired anybody that's smarter than you in a certain area? The designer. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which yeah. designer? Ben. Oh. Having that so capability, some of this the is, architecture capability. Uh, um, some of it Taylor's, is Taylor's, his yeah. knowledge. I need yeah. to outsource this because I need to be doing other things. Nick. Some of it's that. Nick, yeah, Nick's, we've got a lot of people Nick's that out can, yeah. You know, we learn from each Nick other. Is. We are, Nick, Nick is your gardener now. We try to That's why we have a garden from, again. What's his handle? Uh, growing Back to Eden. So, okay. you know, he's for 23 years old. He has a ton of experience, a ton of knowledge, and... You know, His gardens are beautiful. Obviously, met Casey Got from you coming down in the videos. Yeah, yeah. became Let's good talk friends about with them. That. And you know, Casey came down to visit me after the video, and he he kind of wanted to do something similar. You know, I think mm. he was interested in the edible landscaping. He was already an arborist. He wasn't sure what he wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, come down for two weeks, and he was legit. You know, he helped me. We worked. We hung out. He didn't want to came just, for two weeks. I think it was like two weeks, nice. wasn't it? Oh, because he learned between, he didn't want to do edible he? landscaping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was considering he edible landscaping. Yeah, so he ended up being a market gardener. Um, <laughs> that we've obviously stayed in touch and been close friends through mm -hmm. the years. And um, last time I went to visit Casey, I just happened to be Nick was there about two years ago, and I really got to oh, hang out God. with Nick in person. Like we had been just friends through online and social media. I sold Nick one of my uh, cameras when he was just getting into YouTube. He bought my Canon when I went to Sony. Um, and we had just been friends and, you know, I, I got to sit down with him and actually just like realize how smart he was. Realize mm -hmm. who he is. Like, wow. I'm like, hey, man, if you ever need a job, like, give me a holler, come to Florida, you know, and I finally got the call. He called me, you know, and back in May and said, things are falling apart here. And I'm like, well, does that mean you're coming to Florida? You know, I don't even think he called with the idea. I was just like, I threw it right at him. I'm like, you're coming <laughs> to Florida? He goes, well, I could. I'm like, well, think about it. Let me know, you know, and... <laughs> You know, next thing you know, we're having a couple more conversations, and he's he's down in Florida. It worked out great. He stayed with Jim for six months. You know, now he's actually on the farm, and you know, I think there was a little intimidation there for Nick. You know, going from Washington and um, Virginia and a lot of mm -hmm. these colder type climates to Florida with heat and humidity, not yeah. really knowing it's how much very different. <laughs> How different the growing would be. Died in the heat of the summer outside in the full sun every day. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, he's. He learned. He learned Florida's pretty hot. Um, yeah, I, I feel bad for him, but uh, he, he's adapting. He's got the big furry dog who's obviously. Got so a do you dog. adapt, or do you just start working in the morning and take a siesta and work in the like evening? That, I no, think you, it was a struggle. I think your body adapts. Yeah. The more you, the more you're in it, and the, then you can do it. Yeah, yeah your blood it's thins out. Honestly, yeah. Florida. That's, right. That's why when y'all showed up, when y'all showed up to showed up, you were in coats and we were in short sleeves. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> you were complaining about how cold it was. <laughs> yeah, my blood's. I think Mr. Brown bit. was probably in shorts. He was. And no he was not wearing shoes. shoes. He was barefoot. <laughs> yeah, not wearing shoes, and he was in a short sleeve shirt. It's true. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, I think you adapt. I think um, if we moved to Maine or Alaska, we would adapt. I mean, it would be a tough transition. The hardest part for me every year is probably May June. You know, it's going out of winter. Getting used to the heat again, just adapting your body to. Mm. I'm not ready for this. I mean, you walk outside <laughs> and you put your boots on in Florida, you're sweating. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. six thirty in the morning. It's so humid. That's also good for you. It's so good it for is. you. Uh, 
I'm not saying it's fun, but it's good. Stay on top of the magnesium, you know? It's a little tricky in the afternoon. When I came to you, your name was Peter. <laughs> we That's were, what we it were, still is we in my phone. We were introduced as Peter. You are Peter Canaris. Peter okay. and Melissa. And now you're Uncle Pete. Now. Uncle Pete. <laughs> uh, we showed up in the... Some, somehow you gave us... Okay, so here's this total stranger saying, hey, we're going to come and stay with you and film. <laughs> Can we stay And we're going to have our converted school bus. And all of our children. How'd you sell this to Mel? Uh, hey Mel, there's some YouTuber that wants to come make some videos here. No, I think you said there's this guy that I met briefly, <gasps> the PDs or permaculture voices. It's you funny. Or he said you met me. No, that's funny. You maybe it's because is he... that how you knew him? No, no, no. Diego YouTube. Footer. Maybe Diego Footer. Diego, Diego told me about him and I looked up his YouTube. He might have had to fudge a little bit. <laughs> maybe just like. how I remember. That's how I sold it, you know. Yeah, and that he and his. Wife, we've got a YouTube channel. I want to come here for the stop on their tour. Yeah. And I think I had told you when you guys came, like I hadn't, I didn't know anything about it until yeah. just days before you got there. And I just watched a couple videos and how adorable the kids were. <laughs> it was fun. The whole lifestyle was s- sweetest. Yeah. So. He came and met us on his little go cart. On his little golf cart. Golf cart. With and then um, stop sign. one thing yep. I remember about you, and we were still early on the tour, Very. but it still stands. You could especially compared to me, unlike me, you can go through and just start rattling off about yeah. a plant, okay? It was very impressive. And not need any notes, not have any stutters, not have any pauses like you had an outline in your head or something. And I said to you, you need to just start YouTube and just do this. And I said, you know you can get it on your phone, right? And we got the app right then and there. And I said, just put it on the tree limb as your tr- and just go to town. Do you remember what was the first plant you did? Oh yeah, Comfrey was it of the, the South. Mango? Comfrey of the Free South. Of the South. Yeah. And you did. You put up together. You put together right then and there, like a three minute video or something. The phone fell out of the bush. Is it still up. <laughs> it's still in there like that. Is, is that video, video still, still up? Funny. It is. That's good. Keep yeah, it the original. And that 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 launched it. And you from then on, you you've been consistent putting up videos. Thank you for that. I've had a lot of fun, in, you know, on this path. It's, I tell uh, that story a lot, not just that you knew all those plants. Right now. I, I never. Yeah, I didn't know it meant that much to your business. That now you get a lot of your business from that. That's a big marketing force for you. Dare now. I say Huge. all of it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, most people again, you because know, I think. We're not, we don't really have a huge Google presence under a lot of these, uh, what are the words I'm looking for? Like the, um, you know, if somebody search organic gardening or something, right. there's a lot of other pop-up companies Vegetable now. Vegetable gardens or something. Right. We don't you know, really show up for that. How are people finding you then? <laughs> Mostly we're YouTube. What are they searching for? Mostly YouTube. I know, but on YouTube, what are they searching for? Looking at We were trying to figure this out there on the night. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, if you knew, you could lean into it a little more. Yeah. <laughs> website and trying to figure out the keywords that people are even searching for and we're just i think it's coming up in recommendations don't know what anybody's looking for anymore Mm. it's just so natural part of our language we don't really know what somebody who's newer and is looking for help what those keywords would even be so if you guys have suggestions (laughs) i don't think it's about that i think it's recommendations uh, type of video, how long how people are watching find... the video. Right. It's definitely, we definitely, the analytics have definitely veered away from keywords and stuff. Mm. I think that's the coolest thing about the videos, though. And not only is it bringing in jobs, um, it's, you know, I, I really try to keep it as educational and inspirational as possible. Helping people that are never even going to work with us. Right. You know, but it's, it's giving people the inspiration. Like, I get messages every single day. You know, like you inspired me to plant this in my backyard. Mm-hmm. I've I've yeah. ripped out my yeah. backyard because of you. You know, yeah. so awesome. so even if they can't afford us or or they're not local for our service, you right? Know, we've we've gotten Most excited to do something. Like we've got them playing in the dirt. We got a pound of dirt, right? And that's the goal. Like I never imagined being able to hold a camera and talk into it, Justin. Like it was a pretty awkward thing for me to get used to. I know to. you did that into in front of <laughs> a complete so stranger. Well. And I, I've I've always I been haven't gotten shot. anybody to be able to do that now. There's nobody else. Without multiple takes that or will notes just, or plans or... Yeah, and I've, I've never... Know, yeah, you just got to have that. You I just got to have that. Just f- forget all the fears and just mm-hmm. embrace the awkwardness and fear and just do it and be consistent. Now, I didn't know it was going to blow up your business, did I? I didn't know No. That. You didn't know that. No. no. But I did know 
But you there are smarts yeah. that needed to be there shared. are assets, real estate, cash money, stocks. These things are assets. There's also a new one that is more easily. Ta it's always been around, but having an audience. Mm -hmm. But now more than ever, anybody can do it. Before you had to go through a network and get on one of the yeah. four channels on TV and have a producer and an agent, but now you just take the phone out of your back pocket and hit, make beneficial content and hit publish. It's pretty amazing. It really that, is. That is one of the benefits of technology. Yes. Right? It really is. I remember when Justin told me, yeah, I'm going to get Pete to make a YouTube channel. And I was like, I mean, yeah, because you, I mean, we were so impressed when we came to y'all's house. Like... It was like right off the bat. It was just like you knew like so much. And we were just like, whoa, yeah. this is crazy. Like, you had putzed around with something because I saw a video saw a video with a drone shot Mel of your farm or something. Oh, yeah. It was Appalachian yeah. Rising. Rising Appalachian. Rising yeah. Appalachian. Okay. So they had come to your farm, I guess? No. They allowed us to use their music. We just, okay. We just did a drone just video. Made a and drone. it was somebody else's drone. I had a friend that wanted to fly his drone at the house. Okay. And we had probably. A few little videos. That was taken down created. most of the cheesy ones that were made prior. They're private. Um, yeah. But I think yeah. my yeah. Basic, biggest so, excuse when you came to me was I didn't have time, Justin. Like, you, you know, your challenge to me was 30 videos. In 30 days, wow. right? two minute videos is what Did you, you do that? They they quickly evolved. You know, they went from two minutes to three minutes. Well, that was something about you too. Is yeah. now, you didn't do too many of those stick it in a tree and talk. No. no. Although you I bought, think you like, could the have. Little stand I do think could have. Mic for my phone. Like were, thing. but that made it exciting. And that would be the other thing I would teach somebody is just try to get one percent better every day. Mm -hmm. Still, I will watch a vlog. And making notes still. Justin, stop moving and talking. Stop swinging the camera when you're talking. Mm. You notice, yeah. Or, Dan, do this about the edit. Or, should we hire, you know, we've hired an editor. Now, should we hire a filmer? Like, tr always trying to make it better. Mm. You got to constantly be looking for the next level up, you know? Yeah. I think that's, uh, that's like for me, from going from the phone to the... Canon to the Sony to a drone, like right. you know, it's always. When I saw the drone shots, I think that was probably my most exciting. You do piece a of lot equipment. of drone shots. Stuff. I love it. Yeah, but drone shots make so much Best sense for what work. you're doing, though. They do the before because the after. The before yeah, after. Once we're finished, you know, it just gives that whole other eye in the it sky does. perspective. You know, which yeah. I think people, it's like mind blowing. You know, it really kind of gets people like, wow. It gives the wow. Factor. And then YouTube pays you too, so you get ads. You get an ad money. Get a little bit of ad money, yeah. But then mostly it's beneficial because it's bringing in clients and yeah. inspiring others. Like, so we'll, we'll make a video about plants, and plant sales will go up 100% mm -hmm. that week. You know, it's, you don't uh, even have to pitch it? No. No, just putting a plant video out. How far out yeah. are you? How far out are you? Like if I was living in your city and I was like, hey, I want Green Jeans to come and do an installation on my property. Oh, yeah. Like how many okay. weeks do people have to wait for you before you come out? Well, it depends on what you said. If you said, here's my backyard, it's a blank spate, I have, you know, $40,000, make it look good. We mm -hmm. could do it within a couple of weeks. Okay. Now, if it moves into the CDI where if they want to have a design, okay. you know, that's usually a process. So that's more of like a four to six weeks. Okay. But I do get some clients. Like wow. we just did a couple of jobs. We just did one in um, Sarasota, you know, where the client said, this is my budget. This is the space. Use, use your, you know, Just do, fair game. do something. And the, the guys just, loved it. That's awesome. You know, because oh, you got to remember, I'm not, I don't, have, I don't just have employees. I do measurements. Like, and they're not just any, employees. They're not, they're not there for just a job. Have you had any, like. They're into it. They, they believe in it. Yeah. They passion. eat, sleep, and live this, you know. Have you had any exciting clients that you can tell us about, like famous or. I mean. Rich. Founders of Boarhead, Boar's Head, you know, founders wow. of Publix. Ooh. Um, you know, or some, shopping is a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some really, yes. Yeah, is pretty, that going by word of mouth among their community, uh, or are they finding you on YouTube? YouTube. <laughs> finding really? Me on YouTube. Yes, That's yes. Awesome. Finding me through YouTube. Yeah. Small garden for a baseball player. Okay. Yeah, small garden for a ball player. Um, I have to say, I really do you got enjoy. A lot of ball I enjoy and following you. In like on Instagram and stuff because you're on there showing like this is where we're at. Like this is the installation. This is and then like you kind of like follow it through the whole oh. thing. So like I don't obviously. I mean, obviously, I'm your friend, so I enjoy that aspect of it. But just watching your the evolving the difference because you know you're on a different job. All the time. Seriously, yeah. You know, like you, doing different things. It's just really neat to watch. YouTube has also allowed you to do that. Seeing each day. YouTube yeah. has allowed you to now 
travel because you do a lot of travel videos and instagram content of exotic fruits yeah so i kind of got into the fruit hunting a little bit you know and i haven't done any of that since uh well i went for a short trip to look at some property over the summer but mostly Mm kind of pre-corona i did a little bit of traveling mostly around the state of florida coming up to see you casey um you know maine to see jim that kind of stuff yeah I, i if I love traveling with the camera. I could do it full time. You know, we, <laughs> we've kind of started branding yeah. everything in a, we just, you know, we own the domain for Green Dreams TV, mm-hmm. um, kind of started branding all the social media platforms into Green Dreams TV. You know, this way we're like, the we're kind of like our own network, you know, yeah. like the, the kind of stuff you want to see, you know, not the regular mainstream. Um, if the audience yeah. was bigger, I think you would do more of that full time, but because that's not like the huge... It's not where you bring um, your income. And right. We have to kind of focus on local jobs to show people the, you know, capabilities. What you can do. Right. Is that the dream? Now that we're, we're here wrapping it up towards the end, 15 more minutes, what is next? What is the dream? That you wouldn't be able to travel and film or that you would have this retail shop or what? Or all of it? All of it. You know, and I really see the, the travel film thing growing beyond me. You know, like I okay. said, almost like a TV network, you know, where there's people that you know, that also go out and interview under this kind oh, of okay. Green Dreams TV brand, you know, maybe there's... Similar to your Abundance yeah, Plus, you know. but more plant knowledge-based. Okay. Plant knowledge, traveling of, of these type of sites, you know. Um, I just missed out on an install for Tom Brady. Another local company did it. Like, so to going back to famous people... You almost got Tom Brady. Brady. It's happening, you know. They're, they're getting it that done. that website and keywords is important right now. Yeah, we, we, we missed the Google search. The YouTube channel, the people who are looking for those kinds of things, we're missing out on that opportunity. Yeah, I want to have the education site open here this yeah. next year. Because um, Tom Brady's team probably would have just Googled something. Yep. And they and found, found somebody. But this, they were more interested in the <laughs> annual vegetables. And, well, no, I take that back. He's got both. He's got a food forest and annual vegetables, one I understand, you know. And he found this cookie cutter company that's very interesting. New. New and kind of I don't know if I say anything else about yeah. that, but yeah. We'll but quite <laughs> quite interesting. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about that on camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Watch how it unfolds. But but yeah, I think next time you come to Florida, you get to see the commercial site. Um, yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah. As everything really, grows, it's going to happen that fast. Are you going to you're yeah. going to have a building on it? Is there a building, the building on, on the property? It. We're going to get the nursery mat on it. We're, we're probably going to go. You about already s- have a contractor. No, I'm just going to put up a pole barn. Okay. Oh, cool! Yeah. Like just just to be able to do, do farmers market sales and oh, plant cool. sales until hey, we, you can awesome. do that in Florida. Our long long term goal is to put a red iron building in with a commercial kitchen, two stories, a yeah. cafe. Like we want to have everything right Ooh, there. Ooh, a site. cafe, tea yeah, room, like whatever. We we'll finally have a place we can eat down there, places. right? Right around the corner. Yeah, so you won't have to just eat at our place. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that would be nice. Um, That's not what I meant. I meant some place we can go. And- <laughs> There's a couple places, but it's it is slim pickings. It's it's really sad, you know, the food it movement. Really is sad. These places pop they up try. and they go out. It's uh, they do try. They, they we there used to be a couple the places. Just not there. I don't know. Yeah, there's pl- used to be a couple places in Greenville, and people don't aren't voting with their dollars yet on that. No, they're out not. To eat stuff the cheap. And now that the economy's kind of tanking, it's, I'm a big. I stand behind that one. I tell people all the time. I mean, you get three votes every day. You know? Standards. But with your mouth, that, that's the vote that actually counts, you know? Oh, tell me yeah. more about these three votes. Well, I mean, it, who you support with where you're buying your breakfast, where you're buying your lunch, okay. you know, who you're supporting locally. Where's that money going through the funnels? You know, it's going to stay within the community when you spend it locally. When we go to these crappy chain places and everything mm-hmm. else, we're just supporting these big corporations, mm-hmm. you know, where, you know, we literally get three votes a day. What, what do you want to support? Do you want to support fast food do you want to support the local farmer that's you know raising grass-fed beef that's doing it right you know and i've i'm not scared to spend a couple bucks more for something higher quality and better you know and food is the medicine and health is wealth you know, you're gonna as far pay as I'm for concerned. it yeah in the yeah. end you yeah. do now or later yeah. hey the doctor or the farmer right that's what they say yeah uh, you know? i like that one where can folks find you Green Dreams TV. Green obviously. Dreams TV. <laughs> Green Dreams TV YouTube channel. Okay. On YouTube, uh, Instagram. What's your website? Instagram. We're email. still greendreamsfl.com. We own the domain for the okay. TV. We just haven't transitioned. We're kind of thinking about okay. switching everything up. Okay. You know, we've got so much going on. Nursery. Yeah. Uh, installation it's business. It's for people when they come to the website. What do they do? Where, where, right. There's a, we got a lot going on. So. Yeah. Eventually, we'll have an yeah, education yeah, website, a plant website, direct. an install website. That'll be the answer. You'll have three different brands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to start dividing this stuff. Yeah. And it won't all be under Green Dreams TV. What's your hat say? That's the Green Dreams. Just okay. Green Dreams. We haven't added the TV on the end of that one yet. TikTok. Okay. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. You've been going in I on TikTok. I have a lot of fun on TikTok, you know, because, you know, 
when you look at trying to fix the problem in the world today, the, the kids are the okay. roots. Maybe you need to go. You know, to we, we got to start with are. the kids. Yeah. If we can inspire the Same kids, much younger audience. You know, I, I think it's so important. You know, give them an option for when they're getting out of school. You know, all the kids today are just oh, junk. I don't know what they want nice to do. Give something else besides the junk. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. you getting some traction there. I've had a lot of fun on there. Are you getting any jobs from TikTok? Oh, yes. all the time. Actually, really? yes. Even, okay, so hold on. To say yeah. that. 25% of my jobs <laughs> probably come through TikTok. Really? Yes, they found me on TikTok, yes. which is pretty amazing. So and I did forget. And they're amazed by that. I Way can't more... I found you on TikTok. Are they younger people? Yes. Mm. Yeah, most of the time, yeah. Not our age. Or, I mean, it could be then. like that somebody younger, like, oh, no. I mean, you know, they well, know somebody who has more People money. message him <laughs> saying that they were able to break their drug addiction because they found a healthier hobby or wow. a healthier obsession. He's got awesome. you know, dudes that are growing vegetables in the projects and that were inspired by him. It's I like I like the broad range of people mm-hmm. that we're affecting. Mm. My dream is to put a food forest in in Joe Rogan's backyard and create a show <laughs> on MTV like Permaculture Cribs. But yeah. where, where, where we're so converting awesome. Snoop Dogg's front yard well, into that's a food what I was forest. Ask you, didn't, weren't you going to be on Magnolia or something? I'm sorry? Weren't you going to be on Magnolia? We, we've been interviewed a couple times. Nothing's nothing's no, nothing's no shows through. or anything. You're so going to just have to create your own shows. It wasn't for that's just what, our business, though. He would be he was going to contribute with a, a bee local girl. friend who does so, bee uh, bee work. So but, I do the food for her. She brings in the bees. It just the two didn't it didn't. So why don't you produce your own show on on this? That's what we've garden. realized. Why not? Cribs. Yeah. Why not? That's what we did with Abundance Plus. We've been interviewed by HGTV, a bunch no, of these places. Get, just Why? hire yeah. your own, pro- right. call one of these production and companies. And then sell and it just... to HGTV yourself. If, yeah. You, know. oh, just, you just can, Pete. Put it up yourself on YouTube mm-hmm. or that's somewhere true. else. If, you know, I think if we want to inspire the mainstream, that's where we got to go. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean. I would like to network I with see. those people, though. You know? Yeah. I feel like, I like they, the people in those major networks need a little piece of what we are all doing. Yeah. As well. I feel like it. I feel like some of it is going that way. I mean, I feel like like Magnolia does have. I know it's <laughs> trendy. I mean, Magnolia does have some yeah, good stuff I, where I people like are like really growing right. Yeah, you know, like and it. so I that's like great. Shows. And but they they need you guys. We are One day, a perfect fit. <laughs> if it was meant to be, we'd be there. You that's know? right. Well, I don't know. You're, you're, Our time is coming. Got time. Yeah. Major right. right. inspiration. I know that. So. Okay, thank you guys. Anything else you want to add? This place reminds me of the biggest little farm, my favorite <laughs> documentary. It really does. You guys could have your own version of it here. That's yeah. my most inspiring movie I think I've seen. It's yeah, pretty that cool. Is it's a good, good movie. Put my kid in tears. There's a sequel now, now yeah. too. Out there on was a second one. We watched, yeah. yeah, Gavin so and I watched good? it. We need to watch it. It's good. It was just a lot of it was a lot of clips from the original. I think for people who hadn't oh, seen the original, but just yeah. updates, watching their little boy grow up. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a lot of reiteration, really. Just okay. ca- catching up. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Boop.